Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the Money in the Bank review. Money in the Bank this year was from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. And the show was originally supposed to be at Allegiant Stadium. But unfortunately, they couldn't sell a whole lot of tickets uh, for the stadium. So WWE have to move the show from Allegiant Stadium to the MGM Grand Garden Arena. And they said that it was a sellout tonight. Clearly, I read a report that Money in the Bank wasn't technically a sellout. So don't let WWE fool you all thinking that uh, the show uh, was sold out. But Money in the Bank this year... I thought it was a good show. This was a very fun show. Really enjoyed it. There was unpredictability, some unpredictability here tonight, which I really liked. You know, because WWE creative, you know, they're very predictable. You know, matches that they do come off very predictable. I liked that there was a sense of unpredictability tonight. But, of course, we had the women's Money in the Bank match. We had Bobby Lashley versus Austin Theory for the United States Championship. The Royal Women's Championship was on the line where Bianca Belair defended the title against Carmella. And then we had the undisputed WWE Tag Team Championship on the line where the Usos defended the title against the Street Profits. We had the SmackDown Women's Championship on the line where Ronda Rousey defended the title against Natalia, and of course we had the men's Money in the Bank match, but I got to give it to WWE this year. Money in the Bank was a fun, enjoyable show. It was a very good show. So let's jump right in with the review. So Money in the Bank kicked off with the Women's Money in the Bank. It was Alexa Bliss, Asuka, Becky Lynch, Lacey Evans, Liv Morgan, Smiley Raquel, Raquel Rodriguez, and Shotzi. And the match was a mess. It was a clusterfuck. There was botches here and there from the woman. And the match started off with Lacey Evans and Alexa Bliss. They ended up heading out to the floor. And Asuka and Becky Lynch were in the ring. They started trading some strikes. And Asuka ended up getting a ladder into the ring. Becky Lynch ended up slamming uh, Asuka's head onto the ladder. Becky Lynch ended up getting another ladder. And she ended up trying to tip it over onto Asuka. But Asuka ended up moving out of the way. Liv Morgan then ended up coming into the ring. And Liv Morgan was the favorite of the fans uh, going into the um, Women's Money in the Bank match. And Liv Morgan came in. She ended up getting a pop-up knee strike from Asuka. And Smiley Raquel ended up coming in. And she... Ended up taking out Asuka. Raquel ended up trying to lift the ladder. While Liv Morgan and Becky Lynch were both on top of the ladder. But Raquel Rodriguez couldn't do that. So Liv Morgan and Becky Lynch ended up joining forces. And Raquel Rodriguez ended up reversing. Uh, they were trying to do a double suplex. Both Liv Morgan and Becky Lynch. They were trying to suplex uh, Raquel Rodriguez. But Raquel ended up delivering a double suplex to Liv Morgan and Becky Lynch on the ladder. So Raquel ended up suplexing both of them onto the ladder. Alexa Bliss ended up coming into the ring. And Raquel Rodriguez ended up pushing Bliss away. Shotzi ended up coming into the ring. She delivered a crossbody on Alexa Bliss. Raquel Rodriguez and Shotzi ended up both grabbing the ends of the ladder. And so Asuka and Lacey Evans end up 
helping Shotzi uh, sandwich Raquel in the corner with the ladder. Liv Morgan end up running up the ladder to hit a knee strike on Shotzi. Lacey Evans and Asuka end up getting sandwiched on top of the ladder by Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch went up to the top and delivered a leg drop onto all of them. So Bliss end up coming off the top rope with a go round onto Asuka, Lacey Evans, and Liv Morgan. So Lex Bliss end up setting up a ladder in the center of the ring. She ends up starting to climb. Raquel Rodriguez end up cutting Bliss off. She ends up carrying Alexa Bliss on her shoulder. Bliss ends up slipping out the back. End up knocking down uh, Raquel with some forearm strikes. So Bliss ends up sandwiching Raquel Rodriguez in the corner under a ladder. Asuka then cleared out Alexa Bliss. Shotzi ends up coming in and Asuka ends up delivering a hip toss on to uh, Shotzi onto the ladder in the corner on top of uh, Raquel Rodriguez. There was a point where uh, Shotzi ended up hitting her head on the ladder, which that had to hurt. And who knows, Shotzi could have a possible concussion because of that. So we had uh, Liv Morgan later on. She ended up uh, climbing up the uh, ladder. She ended up grabbing the briefcase. Liv Morgan ended up going over the top with a Sunset Flip Powerbomb on Lacey Evans, which was really awesome. So Raquel Rodriguez was on the top of the ladder. So Raquel Rodriguez, when she was climbing the ladder, smiling as she climbed the ladder. So Shotzi ended up tying up Raquel Rodriguez's leg, hanging her upside down on the ladder. Alexa Bliss started to climb the ladder. Shotzi ended up cutting her off. The ladder gave way as Shotzi had Alexa Bliss on her shoulders. And Alexa Bliss ended up landing hard on the ladder as it fell. So we had Shotzi. She was trying to set up the ladder in the ring. So was Lacey Evans. So was Alexa Bliss and Raquel Rodriguez. So they ended up getting three ladders set up in the ring. And they ended up fighting over... Who will climb up the ladder? So Raquel Rodriguez and Shotzi end up climbing an outside ladder. You had Alexa Bliss and Lacey Evans. They end up climbing, climbing up another uh, ladder. Becky Lynch end up tipping over bolt ladders. And all four women were hung up on the top rope. Uh, there was a point where you had uh, Becky Lynch end up pinning the senton onto Asuka on a ladder. It was... You know, a bridge ladder that was set up from the ring apron onto the uh, the commentary table. And we had both Becky Lynch and Asuka end up spilling out to the floor. I think Asuka got the worst of that when uh, Becky Lynch ended up hitting the senton. So Becky Lynch, later on, she ended up starting to climb the middle ladder. Liv Morgan ended up trying to cut her off. Becky Lynch ended up trying to tip uh, Liv Morgan over. Liv Morgan ended up catching herself on the top rope, and she re rebounded back. Liv Morgan knocked Becky Lynch from the center ladder, so Becky Lynch ended up going off the ladder. Liv Morgan ended up climbing up the ladder, and she ended up securing the briefcase. So there you go. Liv Morgan is Miss Money in the Bank. And it was very unpredictable. Never would have thought that Liv Morgan was going to win uh, the Money in the Bank briefcase because a lot of us were saying, oh, this is Becky Lynch's match right here. Becky Lynch is going to walk out Miss Money in the Bank. And clearly, that did not happen. So I like that. Liv Morgan won because it was unpredictable. So Liv Morgan ended up celebrating with the briefcase. The fans end up popping hard uh, when Liv Morgan retrieved the briefcase. So Becky Lynch was on the outside. She was upset. She was throwing a temper tantrum on the outside saying, Oh, I 
was close. I was close to that. So she was making a fool out of herself on the outside, temper tantrum uh, her way on the outside, just hitting the barricade. So, but very happy for uh, Liv Morgan. Never would have thought that she uh, would won uh, Money in the Bank. But good on Liv Morgan. Overall, match was a mess. It was a clusterfuck. Botches here and there. But the outcome was very unpredictable in Liv Morgan winning the Money in the Bank briefcase. And then we had the United States Championship on the line. Austin Theory defended the title against the almighty Bobby Lashley. And this was a good match here. Very entertaining match from uh, Lashley and Theory. The crowd was behind Bobby Lashley all through the match. So the match started off with Lashley and Theory end up locking up. Lashley ended up overpowering on Theory. Theory rolled out to the floor to try to regroup himself. Theory ended up running right into a choke slam uh, by Bobby Lashley. Lashley ended up setting up for the spear, and Theory ended up rolling out to the floor. Lashley ended up cutting Theory off as he was trying to get on the apron, and Lashley ended up knocking Theory off the apron, and Theory went into the barricade. Lashley went out to the floor. He picked up Theory as he tried to run Theory into the ring post, but he ended up escaping. Theory ended up escaping. Theory ended up knocking Bobby Lashley down with a running back elbow, and he got back to the ring. Theory caught Lashley with a punch as he was trying to get back to the ring, and he delivered a kick from the apron. So Theory ended up trying to do a dive from the apron. Lashley ended up catching Theory. He ended up going down to a knee, but he ended up recovering. He ended up lifting Theory. Lashley lift Theory to run him headfirst into the ring post. Lashley then rolled Theory into the ring. He was lined up to deliver the spear, but Theory ended up rolling up to prevent that from happening, to prevent uh, him taking the spear from Bobby Lashley. He rolled himself into a ball to prevent Lashley from spearing him. So we had uh, Lashley end up pausing. He ended up going back on to attack Theory. He ended up running Theory into the turnbuckles. So Theory, later on, he controlled Lashley's uh, wrist as he was stomping away on him. Theory lift Lashley onto the top turnbuckle. He tried to leap up for a Spanish fly, and Lashley ended up blocking Theory. Theory hopped down to the apron, ended up kicking Bobby Lashley off the top turnbuckle. So... Theory ended up going for the cover, and Lashley ended up kicking out. Theory was shown jawing at the crowd, and he then put Lashley into a chin lock. So Bobby Lashley ended up fighting to his feet. Theory ended up taking him back down to the mat with the chin lock, and then he transitioned into a rear chin lock. Lashley ended up fighting back to his feet again, and once again, Theory ended up taking Bobby Lashley down with the chin lock. Lashley ended up fighting back to his feet. He ended up lifting Theory for a little bit. Theory ended up slipping out the back. Lashley ended up reversing, and he nearly grabbed the hurt lock onto Theory. So Theory ended up dropping down to escape from being locked in the hurt lock. So we had uh, Lashley end up going for a vertical suplex. But Theory ended up going all the way over the top, and he landed on his feet to escape to the ring apron. Theory, Theory ended up trying to roll back in, but he ended up running right into a Gorilla Press Power Slam by Lashley. He ended up going for the cover. Theory kicked out at two. So Theory ended up calling for the A-Town down. He lift up Lashley. Lashley ended up reversing that into a roll-up which uh, Theory ended up kicking out at two. Lashley went for the tilt the whirl but Theory ended up escaping, and he ended up hitting the spear. 
Theory ended up trying to go for the eight town down again. Lashley ended up slipping out the back. And he ended up locking in the hurt lock on Theory. So Theory ended up tapping out. And so there you go. Bobby Lashley wins the United States Championship. He is now a three-time United States Champion. So Theory ended up sitting on the entrance aisle, you know, just as he lost the United States Championship. So, but overall, I thought that Theory was going to retain the title. Never was expecting Bobby Lashley to win uh, the U.S. Championship. This was another uh, unpredictable spot here with Bobby Lashley uh, winning uh, the United States Championship. But overall, it was a good match. It was very entertaining. And then we have Sarah Schreiber. Sarah Schreiber was backstage. She was interviewing Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan ended up telling Sarah Schreiber that she doesn't want to mess up her cash-in because she only gets one opportunity. She ended up saying, WrestleMania sounds pretty good. But right now, I just want to celebrate. So that was what Liv Morgan had to say. So Liv Morgan let her embrace, you know, this win that you know that she uh, that she got with uh, winning the Money in the Bank briefcase. And then we had the World Women's Championship on the line. Bianca Belair defend the title against Carmella. This match was awful. This match was absolutely boring. Match started off with Bianca Belair. She ended up grabbing a waist lock from behind, and she immediately took down Carmella. Carmella then ended up getting back to her feet, but she ended up getting sent out to the apron to take a breather. Carmella then ended up catching a kick to uh, Bianca's gut as she was getting back in the ring. Carmella then whipped Bianca into the corner, and Bianca ended up following up, started taunting Carmella from the opposite corner. So she was just basically toying with Carmella. So Bianca ended up driving a shoulder into Carmella's midsection. Carmella came off the ropes, trying for a head scissor, but Bianca Belair ended up hitting a backbreaker to Carmella. Bianca ended up going for her standing moonsault. Carmella ended up avoiding that and rolled out to the floor. Bianca ended up heading out to the floor. She ended up uh, flying Carmella with a uh, shoulder tackle. She rolled Carmella back into the ring, and Carmella ended up going all the way across to the apron. She ended up pulling Bianca Belair's neck down across the top rope and delivered a super kick. So Carmella ended up going for the cover, and Bianca ended up kicking out. Carmella then ended up choking Bianca in the corner, started hitting some back elbows to Bianca. So she ended up going for the cover, and Bianca ended up kicking out. Carmella ended up locking uh, both of uh, Bianca's arms behind her back. Bianca reversed that into a pin attempt to break up the other uh, hold. So Carmella ended up missing a charge into the corner, and Bianca scooped up Carmella. Carmella then ended up slipping out the back and pulled uh, Bianca down to the mat by her hair. Carmella then ended up charging into a clothesline by Bianca, so Bianca fired up with some forearms to Carmella's back. And Bianca went for a delayed vertical suplex to Carmella. Bianca ended up charging into the corner with a shoulder to Carmella's gut and mounted Carmella with some punches in the corner. Bianca basically backflipped off of Carmella and then floored Carmella with a forearm strike. So, at the end of the match, we had Carmella. She was shown bad mouth in Bianca. Bianca ended up firing up. She lifted Carmella up and planted her with the KOD. And she ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Bianca Belair ended up winning the match, retaining 
the Royal Women's Championship. Post-match, Carmella ended up attacking Bianca, started pounding away on her with some forearms. So Bianca ended up recovering, and she ended up holding up the SmackDown Women's Championship as Carmella was backing up the entrance aisle. And pretty much that was basically that. But overall, this match was boring. Match was absolutely awful. And then we went back to the commentary table and they were talking about Logan Paul signing with WWE, which you all know my thoughts on that if you saw my SmackDown and AEW Rampage review at the beginning of uh, the video I talked about, you know, my thoughts on Logan Paul signing with WWE. They have shown a video of Logan Paul training and this Monday on Raw, we're going to get The Miz discussing Logan Paul's return. So they have shown a clip of Logan Paul saying that he doesn't want to team up with The Miz and that he wants to face him at SummerSlam. So The Miz is going to respond uh, to Logan Paul on Raw Monday. God. Logan Paul signed with WWE. Thank you, WWE, for letting me know when to change the channel when he comes on. What a waste of a contract. And a waste of Ross's space for Logan Paul. So then we saw a video from earlier in the day and it showed Alexa Bliss entering her locker room, and Lily was in there, you know, Lily, Lily the doll. And basically, Alexa Bliss was asking Lily where all this stuff came from. So there was a whole bunch of stuff in there. And pretty much this was basically a commercial to promote the uh, WWE Credit One Visa card. So <laughs> what was really funny was we heard the crowd booing uh, this all because this was awful. This ad was absolutely awful. This was just a way for them to promote the uh, WWE Credit One Visa card. And basically the uh, ad ended with Alexa Bliss. Uh, open up a little like box and show like little shoes. It was awful. So then we had the Usos. The Usos end up coming out. They got on the mic. Jimmy Uso end up saying that the Street Profits are twos, and that we, the ones. So the Street Profits end up making their way out, and they made their way out through the crowd, uh, which was cool. So then the match ended up kicking off the Street Profits versus the Usos for the Undisputed WWE Tag Team Championship. And this was a very good match. In my opinion, this was... One of the best tag team matches in WWE this year. This match was absolutely entertaining. Even though we've seen the Usos and the Street Profits go at it before. You know, we've seen, you know, Jimmy Uso versus Angelo Dawkins. And then Monday on Raw, we saw Jey Uso versus Montez Ford. You know, we've seen these guys go at it before. But they put on a... Very good match tonight. It was very entertaining. So Dawkins started off the match against Jimmy Uso. Both of them end up blocking up. Dawkins end up grabbing a headlock on Jimmy. Jimmy ended up knocking down Dawkins with a shoulder tackle. And both Jimmy and Jay end up posing for the crowd, which got booze. Dawkins ended up grabbing a headlock on uh, Jimmy. And then he ended up hitting a shoulder tackle of Jimmy, at which he followed up with a drop kick. He ended up knocking Jay Uso off the apron. Dawkins ended up taking down Jimmy, and he tagged in Montez Ford. Ford ended up going up to the top turnbuckle. Jimmy ended up rolling out of the ring, out to the floor. Jay tagged in. Jay ended up grabbing a side headlock on Montez Ford. 
Four then ended up hitting a shoulder tackle to knock down Jay, to which Jay responded back with a takedown. He ended up running, but he ended up running right into a drop kick by Montez Ford. Ford tagged back in Dawkins, and both of the Prophets ended up double teaming on Jay. And uh, we had Dawkins end up going for the cover. Jay ended up kicking out at two. Dawkins ended up hitting some forearm strikes to Jay. Jimmy then ended up making a blind tag. And the Usos ended up surprising Dawkins with a double flapjack. So Dawkins ended up spilling out to the floor. Jimmy ended up following up with a suicide dive onto Dawkins on the floor. And both Jimmy and Jay end up delivering a vertical suplex on the floor, which sent Dawkins upside down into the ring post. Dawkins managed to get back into the ring as Jay was uh, waiting for him in the ring. Dawkins ended up blocking a punch by Jay, and Jay ended up responding with uh, his own uh, punch to Dawkins. Jay hit a run shoulder into Dawkins' gut in the corner, and he then ended up choking Dawkins over the middle rope. Jimmy with the cheap shot. He ended up uh, cheap shotting Dawkins while the referee uh, wasn't looking. So Jimmy tagged in, started mounting Dawkins with some punches. Jimmy ended up charging right into a punch by Dawkins, so both Jimmy and Dawkins were down. Jimmy tagged in Jay. Dawkins tagged in Ford, so Jay and Ford went at it. Ford ended up going up to the top turnbuckle, and he ended up leaping right into a super kick delivered by Jay. So Jay ended up going for the cover. Ford kicked out a two. Jay ended up whipping Ford hard into the corner. Jay started choking Ford on the bottom rope. And Jimmy ended up sneaking in a drive-by drop kick, which the ref didn't even see it. Jimmy tagged in, and the Usos end up hitting a decapitation elbow drop on Montez Ford. Jimmy ended up chopping Ford in the corner. And he then chopped Ford again against the ropes. Jimmy choked Ford over the middle rope and tagged in Jay. So both Jimmy and Jay end up doing a double wishbone snap on Montez Ford's uh, legs. Jay ended up cross-facing Ford on the mat and put him in a chin lock. Ford fought back to his feet and was just out of Dawkins' reach for the tag. Jay ended up pulling uh, Ford back and kicked Dawkins off the apron. Jay tagged in Jimmy. Ford ended up fighting out of the Usos' corner. Ford ended up going out to the apron. He tried to slingshot back in, and Jimmy ended up connecting with an uppercut to Ford. So Ford was down on the apron. So Jimmy was trying to go for a suplex on the apron. Ford ended up reversing that, and so Ford end up pin a vertical suplex to Jimmy on the apron, to which Jimmy ended up falling to the floor. It was a uh, nice uh, vertical suplex from uh, Montez Ford to uh, Jimmy. So Ford ended up rolling to the ring, he ended up crawling to his corner, he made the tag to Dawkins. Dawkins immediately dived over the top rope onto both of the Usos, uh, which was cool. So Dawkins ended up running Jimmy over with clotheslines in the ring, and he ended up hitting the flying back elbow. Dawkins ended up hitting the twist and splash in the corner and a spinning neck breaker to Jimmy. Dawkins ended up going for the cover, to which Jimmy kicked out a two. Jimmy ended up going out to the floor. Dawkins ended up following Jimmy. He ended up running over both of the Usos. So Dawkins rolled Jimmy back into the ring. He tagged in Ford. Jimmy ended up getting pushed off by Dawkins into a backdrop suplex by Ford, which uh, was a uh, good combo there. And so Ford ended up going for the cover, and Jimmy ended up kicking out. Ford ended up hitting a series of kicks on Jimmy, and Jay ended up making the blind tag. Dawkins ended up tagging in, ended up getting Jay on his shoulders. Ford ended up coming off the top turnbuckle with a blockbuster, which got another near fall. So at the end of the match, 
we had Jay end up lifting Ford on his shoulders. Ford ended up escaping and ran into a double super kick by the Usos. And the Usos followed up the super kick with the 1D on Montez Ford. And they end up getting the win. So the Usos end up winning the match and retain the uh, undisputed WWE Tag Team Championship. So, but they end up showing on the replay that Montez Ford's shoulders was not down during the pin. So the ref didn't even see that. And then they end up showing us another replay in slow-mo. And Michael Cole, Pat McAfee, and uh, Corey Graves, they end up agreeing that Ford had a shoulder up. So watch WWE give us a rematch with the Usos and the Street Profits again. And we're going to get the titles on the line again. Watch them do that. How many times are we going to see the Usos and the Street Profits go at it? But overall, this was a very good entertaining match. And in my opinion, this was the best tag team match in WWE this year. It was a very entertaining uh, match this was. And then we had a vignette. And this vignette had some supernatural imagery in there. Like we saw like crows and gothic you know, looking churches. We saw like gold medals. And could this mean that Bray Wyatt is coming back? But I don't think... It's Bray Wyatt. Could, people were saying, oh, it could be Bray Wyatt. It could be Gable Steveson. Or it could be Edge. Out of those three, I am leading this toward Edge. I think this is all Edge here. I think this uh, mysterious vignette, you know, with the supernatural uh, imagery here. Is going to mark the return of Edge. Maybe we get a uh, brood version of Edge. Who knows? But I sense that this whole uh, vignette is basically uh, Edge's return. And then we had the SmackDown Women's Championship on the line. Ronda Rousey defend the title against Natalia. This was absolutely boring. So Natalia started off the match. She ended up going right after Ronda with the lockup. And Natalia ended up taking down uh, Rousey with a headlock. She transitioned into a hammerlock. And Ronda ended up going to the ropes to break up the hold. Natalia then ended up grabbing a waist lock on Ronda. She ended up grabbing an arm bar to take down Ronda. Ronda ended up getting back to her feet and reversed that into a wrist lock. Ronda then took down Natalia for a couple of pin attempts. Natalia ended up kicking out and grabbed the ankle lock on Ronda, to which Ronda ended up reversing that into her own ankle lock. So Natalia ended up rolling out of that. So Natalia then started stomping on Ronda's neck. And Ronda ended up grabbing an ankle lock again, to which Natalia ended up getting to the ropes to break up the ankle lock. And she rolled out to the floor. So Ronda ended up going after Natalia. She ended up catching up to her in the ring. And the referee ended up having to separate the both of them. So Natalia whipped Ronda down into the middle rope. And then she ended up hitting her discus clothesline to Ronda. Natalia ended up going for the cover, to which Ronda kicked out too. So Natalia started mounting Ronda with some punches and tossed her into the corner. She started stomping down on Ronda, and then Natalia started posing for the crowd. She then slapped Ronda in the face. She snapped and mared her down to the mat and put her in a sleeper hold. Ronda ended up fighting to her feet, and Natalia slammed her down by the back of her head. Natalia ended up trying a slingshot backdrop suplex to Ronda, but Ronda ended up reversing it. Natalia ended up retaking the advantage of the match by grabbing an abdominal stretch on Ronda, to which Ronda ended up reversing it into her own abdominal stretch. 
So we had Natalia end up whipping Ronda into the corner, but she ended up running into a back elbow by uh, Ronda. Ronda then clotheslined Natalia and took her down, and she ended up hitting a rising knee strike in the corner. Ronda ended up poisoning up Natalia for the Piper's Pit, but she had, couldn't end up connecting that, and Natalia ended up getting a pin attempt, to which Ronda ended up kicking out. So Natalia ended up slapping Ronda in the face. Ronda ended up grabbing a judo takedown on Natalia, and she ended up setting up for an arm bar, and Natalia ended up pulling Ronda out of the ring. So we had, at the end of the match, Natalia ended up getting out of the ankle lock, and Ronda ended up grabbing a head and arm triangle, and Natalia ended up tapping out. So there you go. Ronda ended up winning the match, retaining the SmackDown Women's Championship. But then, Liv Morgan ended up coming out. Liv Morgan ran down to the ring with the briefcase in hand, and they have announced that Liv Morgan is cashing in the money in the bank on Ronda Rousey. So there we have the match. Liv Morgan versus Ronda Rousey. SmackDown uh, Women's Championship on the line. The bell ended up ringing. Ronda immediately locked in the ankle lock on Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan ended up fighting for the ropes, but Ronda kept pulling her back into the ankle lock. Liv Morgan slipped out of the ankle lock and rolled Ronda Rousey up. And so there you go. Liv Morgan ended up winning the match. So Liv Morgan is your new SmackDown Women's Champion. And what a night Liv Morgan has had here. So Ronda ended up hitting the SmackDown Women's Championship to Liv Morgan. And they end up hugging. Ronda ended up raising Liv Morgan's hand. And she ended up leaving the ring. And Liv Morgan was celebrating in the ring. And that was basically that. But overall, what a moment it was for Liv Morgan. But don't get too excited, people. Don't get too excited. Because you know what this is leading up to? It's leading up to the overrated queen known as Charlotte Flair coming back. And Charlotte's going to stick her nose once again into the SmackDown Women's Title picture. And she's going to be the one to take the SmackDown Women's Championship off of Liv Morgan. So we're going to have, once again, Charlotte Flair be the SmackDown Women's Champion. Which we all don't want to see. That would be fucking awful. But we all know it's coming. We all know it's coming, even though we all are going to hate it when it happens. So don't get too excited, people, with Liv Morgan being the champion. How I feel is that Liv Morgan won the title only to keep it warm to when Charlotte comes back. So then we had the main event. The men's Money in the Bank. Drew McIntyre, Omos, Riddle, Sami Zayn, Seth Rollins, Sheamus, and Mad Cat Moss. So they were all in the ring. And so, Adam Pearce ended up coming out. Adam Pearce ended up announcing that there is going to be a eighth participant in the Money in the Bank. And who was the eighth guy? It was Austin Theory. So Austin Theory was the eighth participant in the Money in the Bank match. And why? Why was Austin Theory the eighth participant? What did Austin Theory do? He didn't qualify for Money in the Bank. He didn't even have a qualifying match. So he was just slotted. He was just slotted into the Money in the Bank match here because of politics. That's all it was. Austin Theory was added as the 8th participant in the Money in the Bank because of WWE politics. 
So we had the men, they were trying up to gain up on Omos because, of course, Omos is the tall guy in the match, but Omos ended up overpowering all the guys in there and stood tall. Omos slammed McIntyre in the middle of the ring. Omos then ended up heading out to the floor. Theory and Seth Rollins ended up trying to run Omos over with the ladder, but Omos ended up running through that. Omos ended up grabbing the ladder, and he, he ended up outsmarting Riddle and Moss. They ended up trying to baseball slide drop kick the ladder. So Omos was alone in the ring with the ladder. Sheamus ended up going after him, and Riddle ended up grabbing a front headlock on Omos. Omos ended up powering out of that, and then slamming Riddle. Moss ended up coming in, you know, going after Omos, but he ended up getting tossed over the top rope out to the floor by Omos. Omos turned around into a Claymore delivered by Drew McIntyre, to which Omos ended up going over the top rope, and he ended up landing on his feet. McIntyre ended up setting up the ladder in the middle of the ring. McIntyre climbed almost all the way up the ladder, but Sheamus cut McIntyre off and tossed him out of the ring. Sheamus ended up climbing up the ladder, but McIntyre was back up the ladder, and he cut him off, and they started trading punches. Theory then ended up trying to sneak up the ladder, and Sheamus and McIntyre ended up catching him and end up bringing Theory down. So Sheamus and McIntyre, they end up taking turns by being up on Theory. Rollins brought in a ladder to clear out Sheamus and McIntyre. Rollins ended up throwing the ladder out of the ring and onto McIntyre and Sheamus. Riddle came into the ring, ended up attacking Rollins. Rollins ended up throwing him into the ladder, and the ladder toppled over. Rollins was sent up for the pedigree on Riddle, but Riddle backdropped Rollins onto the ladder, and Riddle followed up with a Broton. Sami Zayn ended up sneaking in, and he ended up dumping Riddle out of the ring. Zayn ended up setting up the ladder, started climbing up on the ladder, but Madcap Moss ended up cutting Sami Zayn off, started beating him down in the corner. Sami Zayn pulled Moss into the ladder, and he ended up slamming it on top of Moss. And then later on, Omos came back to the ring. He pulled Moss off the ladder because Moss was starting to climb on the ladder, and Riddle was climbing on the opposite side. So Omos entered, pulled Moss off the ladder. Omos then pulled Riddle off. He ended up catching Riddle and power slammed him. Theory jumped off the top turnbuckle to which Omos caught Theory and choke slammed him. Omos then ended up starting to climb the ladder, which I'm surprised when Omos climbed the ladder that the uh, stair of the ladder didn't even break. Moss ended up trying to tip over the ladder. And McIntyre ended up coming in to help, and Omos ended up stemming down from the ladder. They ended up dumping Omos out of the ring, out to the floor. So all the guys were ganging up on Omos. They ended up hitting him with ladders. They started to bury uh, Omos with the ladders. So Omos, you know, was buried under a bunch of ladders. You know, typical WWE when there's a tall guy in a ladder match or a Money in the Bank match. The guys have to uh, just dump the ladders on top of the tall guy so the tall guy wouldn't get up from it. So Omos was buried, you know, in a bunch of ladders. Rollins ended up setting up a ladder in the ring, started to climb up it. Sami Zayn climbed up the opposite side of the ladder and they were both fighting at the top. So... We had Theory end up knocking Sheamus off the top of the ladder later on, and Moss ended up pulling Theory down and hit him with a fallaway slam. So somehow later on, Omos got back up after being buried under a bunch of ladders. So Omos came back to the ring. He started to clean house. Omos set up the ladder in the middle of the ring. Rill jumped on Omos's back. Omos shrugged Rill off. So Theory climbed the ladder, and Omos ended up catching him. Omos ended up hitting the tree slam on Theory. 
So Omas end up repositioning the ladder. He ended up getting hit from behind by Sheamus. Sami Zayn delivered the Huluva kick on Omas. Rill end up grabbing a head and arm triangle on Omas over the top rope. To which Moss dumped Omas over the top rope. McIntyre end up delivering a headbutt on Omas. Rollins end up running down the ring apron to hit the stomp on Omas. So they end up lifting Omas. All these guys lift Omas together and they end up dropping Omas through the commentary table, which that was a amazing moment there where he had all these guys lifting Omas, a heavy set uh, guy, and they just dropped him through the commentary table. So we had everyone, they were starting to fight on the floor. Sami Zayn snuck into the ring, started to climb the ladder. McIntyre ended up making it in the ring in time to pull Sami Zayn down. He ended up ramming Sami Zayn's head into the ladder. So Sheamus ended up coming in. He ended up throwing the ladder into McIntyre's face. So we had uh, Rollins and Riddle on top of the ladder uh, later on in the spot. And Riddle ended up hitting the RKO to Rollins from the top of two ladders, which was crazy. So Riddle started to climb the ladder while everyone was down. Theory slid into the ring. He climbed the opposite side of the ladder. Riddle and Theory were trading punches at the top of the ladder. So Theory ended up pushing Riddle off the ladder. Theory grabbed the briefcase. And there you go. Theory is Mr. Money in the Bank. And I have a problem with it. Because Theory did not have to qualify for Money in the Bank. He was just added in there because of WWE politics. And it is also a slap in the face to the other participants that had to qualify for Money in the Bank. This was a terrible decision. Because we all thought that Rollins was going to walk out with the Money in the Bank. But, you know, unpredictable. With Theory uh, being slotted into the Money in the Bank. Which... Why was that needed? Then everybody in that arena was pissed off. They end up walking out. you seen people walk out of the arena when Theory ended up retrieving the briefcase. You know, even the fans knew that this is bullshit. And that just, this was WWE politics playing a role in this. They slotted Theory in there where he didn't have to qualify. And this is WWE's way of yeah, well, Theory, here's your easy pass into Money in the Bank. We know that you didn't have to qualify. So here's your free ticket into the match. That's all this was. So Theory is Mr. Money in the Bank. But overall, the men's Money in the Bank I thought was good. Aside from Theory winning... Uh, the Money in the Bank briefcase. But now is how Money in the Bank ended. Overall, this was a good show, very entertaining, unpredictability here, uh, which you know was good. You know, aside from uh, Austin Theory uh, being slotted into uh, Money in the Bank, the men's Money in the Bank, but overall. Good, entertained show it was. But anyways, that's it for the Money in the Bank review. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Definitely give the video a thumbs up. Comment, subscribe. And I'll see you all later.